Welcome back to the GTN show. This week we have a big, big tech special. Yeah, a load of new and exciting tech has dropped for the cycling and triathlon market that I'm pretty sure you're going to like. A triathlon video has gone viral for all the right reasons and we've got some racing news. Triathlon has really hit the headlines this past week for a small but rather moving gesture. Now, this was amid the Santander Triathlon just last weekend, which Javier Gomez actually went on to win, but it was the race for third that has really caught everyone's attention. Now, British athlete James Teagle was coming into the finish in third place, went round the last corner and essentially overshot it, went the wrong direction, whether that was a navigational error, mishap, whatever. But that allowed Diego Mentrida to overtake him just metres before the finish finish line and could have carried on to take that third place. However, just before the finish line, he stopped and allowed James to overtake him again and take that third place, which is just inspirational. Uh, Diego actually commented saying, this is something my parents and my club taught me since I was a child. In my view, it should be a normal thing to do. And actually for his actions, the event organizers awarded Diego the same prize money as third place, the same as what James got. So 300 euros, which is a lovely gesture. Um, a number of news broadcasters and celebrities jumped on this saying this was a true display of sportsmanship, including Will Smith, who popped up a little video on Instagram and signed it off saying, You my dude, Diego. I appreciate you. I'm sorry, Diego. If I was in your shoes, that would be life complete. Not only did Will Smith mention you, he said you're his dude. Right, a couple of bits of racing related news before we move on to the tech news. The PTO are supporting yet another race. This time it's the Spanish Triathlon Championships due to take place on the 26th of September in Bilbao. Now, this race has been running for around nine years now. It's a non-drafting format and actually our very own Fraser has raced it a couple of times before and talks very fondly of it. I'm not sure if there's any race out there that Fraser hasn't actually done. The prize purse is 15,000 euros, so no doubt it's going to attract a pretty stellar lineup, as we've seen with some of these other races that have been supported by the PTO. Already has the likes of Javier Gomez on there, so look forward to seeing that start list grow. We do have also a new event that's coming for 2021, also over in Spain. It's the Trade In International Triathlon 140.6. It's an iron distance triathlon due to take place on the 31st of May, 2021 just outside of Girona. Now the organisers expect it to reach around 3,000 participants. The entry fee is currently 149.99 euros but crucially the organisers or the event is a non-profit event so they are willing to refund and happy to refund entry fees should they have to cancel the event due to COVID-19. And Quite interestingly, they've got a whopping prize purse for this, €30,000, which means that the first place male and female finishers would take home €7,000 each, paying all the way down to fifth. All right, but now for the bit that I've been really looking forward to, the tech news. Why? Well, over the weekend, we had stage 20 of the Tour de France, the time trial. And as per usual, this is an opportunity for brands to release new products, all stuff that's relevant to us triathletes. So first up from Muckoff, something that I'm not sure many of us really expected. It's an oversized jockey wheel system. Yeah, that's right. And I mean, I guess it does make a lot of sense, really, given that Muckoff spends so much time trying to improve a drivetrain's efficiency. Why not make a set of jockey wheels that help to improve that further? Well, we actually spotted this aboard Mikhail Lander's Merida Time Warp TT bike over the weekend. And it's actually called, from Muckoff, their Lightweight Oversized Precision Shifting System, LOPS. Um, and according to a recent press release from Muckoff, it's the lightest and stiffest of any of those selected from leading competitors. Now, if you're not aware of what these oversized jockey wheel systems do, essentially they help to smoothen out the chain flow and reduce friction. So by increasing the cog size, the chain doesn't have to go through quite as tight angles and that therefore reduces friction. Now, a few details on this um, oversized jockey wheel system from Muckoff. It's formed from two aluminium wheels, one 13 tooth and one 19 tooth, finished with a coating to reduce friction. The bearings are obviously ceramic, why not? And the cage is 3D printed from titanium, which makes it 10% lighter than its nearest competition. 
And on the same bike, we couldn't help but notice a couple of new Vision accessories too. So one of which was a new disc wheel from Vision. Now, Ollie from GCN actually featured this back last year at the Taipei Bike Show. It's called the Vision Metron TFW. It's full carbon. It is available in a tubeless setup and also it gets a pretty special paintwork. Well, in this particular case, it did just adding four grams to it whilst also improving aerodynamics. The wheels are hand-built in Italy and come in at a pretty respectable 945 grams, which for a tubeless setup, that's pretty darn impressive. I um, also noticed on the Jumbo Visma bikes that they had some rather bling extensions. Now, they were called the Vision Metron TFE Aero extensions. They're a little bit like the extensions we saw on Cam Worth's bike, his Pinarello in Kona last year. They're a one-piece design that incorporates essentially the armrests into the extensions all as one. Now, Vision say that they're 8% faster than their standard extensions, which is a good 9.4 seconds off a 40 kilometer time trial. Pretty impressive. Uh, the construction is full carbon fiber. Um, it uses a stackable spacer underneath to let the riders adjust their cockpit height and I guess the angle as well. Um, the medium pro spec weighs in at just 128 grams for the pair. Well, we also can't forget to talk about the Ineos team bikes and their wheel choices. Now, the team is sponsored by Shimano, so typically we see the team using the Dura Ace wheel sets from Shimano or the Pro wheel sets also from Shimano for the TT sections. However, it's been pretty well documented that Team Ineos and formerly Team Sky have switched out their wheel set choices and brands for certain stages. For instance, for the mountains, it's been well documented they've used lightweight wheels in the past. And they very much did that this weekend in stage 20 of the Tour de France for the TT. They were seen using the Princeton Carbonwitz Wake 6560 wheel set on the front, which is actually the same wheel set choice that Cam Worth has used for various races in the past. And given that he trains with them, I guess maybe he's passed that bit of knowledge on or a certain connection between them and the team. But they teamed that with an unbranded disc wheel. That disc wheel turns out to be the Aox disc wheel from Aerocoach, which is actually one of the lightest tubeless disc wheels out there, coming in under 950 grams. I also mentioned a few weeks back about the new TT helmet from Laser called the Volante. Well, we got to see that this weekend on top of Roglic's head, although unfortunately looking rather pained. Now, as he switched from his TT bike to his road bike, he obviously decided that he didn't need his visor anymore. It's probably getting quite humid and steamy in there. So he ripped that off, although in doing so, he dislodged his helmet. Now, given how much pain he was in during that stage, I think he just decided, heck, I'm just going to leave it. That does, however, mean that every photo of Roglic coming across the finish line for that time trial stage is with his helmet almost falling off his head. Though that is the new laser Volante helmet. Regardless, it does still look pretty cool. However, that does open up a pretty interesting debate. Now, Roglic lost the Tour de France in that time trial stage. Pocaccia put in an astonishing performance to take that yellow jersey and to take that win. Now, we can kind of compare the two riders. They've got very similar watts per kilo. Now, obviously, Roglic was possibly having a terrible day, just really not feeling himself. But Pocaccia looked brilliant on the TT bike. He looks super classy, super aero, super comfortable. You can tell he spent a lot of time on the TT bike refining everything and making sure he's as aero and comfortable as possible. Roglic, on the other hand, well, he looked like he hadn't ridden a TT bike in years. Now, regardless of what the cause was, I think we can all take something from this as triathletes who have to race on our TT bikes and aero bars quite a lot, is simply let's practice riding on our TT bikes more. Practice riding in the aero Bars, as that is what we do have to do in a race after all. Well, last week I mentioned that Salomon are starting a new recycling project with a new pair of shoes. Well, it appears our channel partner On is doing something very similar, or well, they may be taking it a step further again. Now, they produced a pair of shoes that are made entirely from recycled goods. At the end of their lifetime, you can send those shoes back to On, they'll rip them apart, they'll recycle everything from them and produce a new pair from them, all part of a monthly subscription package. Now, that's called Project Cyclone. It costs 29 euros and 95 cents per month. As a member of this subscription, you'll receive a pair of these Cyclone shoes. They predict they'll last somewhere around six to nine months for an active runner. At the end of that lifetime, as I mentioned, you'll send them back to On, you'll receive a new pair. On will then process those shoes, rip them apart, recycle them, and well, 
the life just continues of this material. It keeps getting recycled, which is absolutely fantastic. I mentioned it last week and said that it's a brilliant initiative and a brilliant move. And I do really hope that other brands catch on to this. And the final bit of tech news comes from Hewlett Packard. Yeah, you heard me right. Hewlett Packard or HP, who you better probably know for printing onto paper at home or in your office. Well, they are actually experts in 3D printing too, and their senior exec has been seen on showcasing a pair of running shoes that have been made from 3D printing. Now, they've actually 3D printed the midsole and the insole of these shoes to create a pair of shoes that weigh under 200 grams. Now, this may seem totally bizarre that Hewlett Packard are associated with running, but they have actually long been associated with running and some of the brands such as Brooks and even Nike in producing and helping them to develop a number of their shoes. Now, HP has state-of-the-art technology that can scan a foot, analyze gait, and create a digital 3D model of foot. Now, they've actually been using that to create insoles for some time now, whereby the data from that 3D 3D scanner is then sent to HP's 3D printer and essentially prints you a unique sole. And well, it seems like they're taking this a step further now. So watch this space, Hewlett Packard running shoes. And now for the race news, before I hand over to Heather for the remainder of the show, we have just one big race this weekend. It was the Pushing Limits race over in Germany that was supported by the PTO. So there's a sizable prize purse for those athletes taking part and man managing to get into some of those top spaces. It was won by Lisa Norden on the women's side. She took the win by a whole minute and 30 seconds. Imogen Simmons took second place, then Lucy Hall in third. On the men's side, it was Gustav Eden that took the win by a whole two minutes over Peter Hemrick in second, Frederick Funk in third. And interesting, some pretty big names further down the list. We had Boris Stein in 8th, Michael Rayler in 12th, Andreas Dreitz in, in 13th, and Nils Fromhold all the way down in 18th. Hey guys, I'm back. Thanks Mark for doing the tougher part. I get the fun part this week, looking at your photos. This first one that is sent in from Ben, who um, says a friend turned him on to triathlons and he was bitten pretty hard, completed three sprint distance races last year, and then was looking forward to the 2020 season. Yep, you went alone on that one, Ben. His wife thinks he's crazy, but he's lost 90 pounds so far. Ride bikes with my friends and drop them after several miles. My fitness level is through the roof. Thank you for providing great resource. Oh, Ben, that is such a lovely story. Um, awesome. Thank you. And keep it up. And um, what a great setup you've got there. The full Wahoo kicker climb and the Wahoo kicker, no excuses, and a treadmill. Love that. And love the picture as well of you running. Awesome stuff. Um, now we've got Kevin, who's looking quite serious in this photo. But he does say he was looking at the waves. This is in South Africa, Camps Bay. What a stunning part of the world, I have to say. Um, wondering whether all the GTM videos um, made him a better athlete. Indeed, apparently. Well, great stuff, um, Kevin. Hopefully you enjoyed that swim that you were contemplating. Um, yeah, awesome. I would love to be swimming there right now, especially as you guys are going into summer. Um, but we've now got a couple of inspirational bike photos they're rather contrasting because this first one I spotted, I think Mark had kept this one quiet. It's been sent in by Paul um, and he says that under bike description, a TT bike, uh, and it is from the Hell Valen Tri. And his description is watching people struggle on the struggle. And somehow I think he knows that it wasn't just people. This is Mark. I doubt Mark was struggling as much as me on the struggle, but still a nice photo. It just shows how tough that Hell Valen Triathlon was. And now we've got another inspirational bike photo that is rather contrasting. It's been sent in by Martin and it's his Trek Madonna SLR disc speed. And this is in South County Trail, New York State, USA. And he says his first ride on a new bike. You've got to love that feeling, haven't you? Um, added benefits. Number one, rode 50 miles with my son, Jeremy. And number two, the perfect weather. Yeah, a little bit contrasting to the struggle, I think, but a beautiful photo nonetheless. Um, and now we're finishing off with another swim photo. Well, almost a swim photo. It's sent him from Andrew um, from North Yorkshire Water Park in Scarborough. And he says it's him and his friend Leanne who decided to get in a really big swim, having made the most of the lake reopening. Their plan was to swim 
3.8 kilometers, so obviously an Ironman swim, but after we'd hit 4,000 meters, we pushed on to go for 5K. I mean, why not? Uh, they said it was both of our longest ever swims. Both got absolutely freezing, exhausted, and spent the rest of the day eating everything. Yeah, I don't blame you on that one. Awesome achievement, um, great stuff. And then we've got a nice little Strava squiggle of several laps there as well. So brilliant. Um, yeah, a great selection. I'm inspired to go and find some open water, I think, maybe somewhere a little bit warmer, prefer the Camps Bay photo. Anyway, wherever you guys are training, doing virtual triathlons, or even doing actual races, or you're just your home setup, do share it with us. You can do that using the uploader that's on screen and also in the description below. On to caption competition now, and last week we had this rather marvellous photo from the World Cup in Prague of the Australian exit, or entry in this case, and you do quite often get some great photos from here. Looks like someone's dive went rather disastrously wrong. But anyway, that's not what we're looking at. We're looking at your suggestions for a caption. And we've got a sort of theme here from the first three. Um, Pateri Caristo says, time out, time out. Dave Reed, is this what they mean by practicing T1? And Ross Taverner, give me a T, give me an R, give me an I. So yeah, if you look closely, We've got a bit of a T shape going on, unintentionally, I'm sure. Um, Savage Power is our final runner up with signaling that the water is only two feet deep. I like it. But our winner this week is Phil Patterson. I said it was an Australian exit. That doesn't mean you have to dive down under. I like that. Very clever indeed. Well, well done, Phil. Get in touch and we will get you a GTN cap. And now, this week's picture is from the same World Cup. It's Flora Duffy and Georgia Taylor Brown having a bit of a fist bump, it looks. Give it your best shot. Leave those caption suggestions in the comments section below. And obviously, we'll be back next week with the show, but between now and then, there's plenty more to come. We've got a video looking at whether ice baths really work. Also, Mark is looking at the worst value bike upgrades Yep, you heard me correctly on that one. Um, but as you can see here at GTM, we are hanging on to the ends of summer and we're staying tropical for the time being. So if you like the look of these t-shirts, go and check them out in the GTN shop. You can also subscribe to our channel to make sure you never miss a video again. You can do that by clicking the globe on screen. Give us a like if you've enjoyed this video. And before you go, a couple of videos you might like to take a look at. One on how not to annoy your friends when running. And also we have the penultimate episode of the Couch to 5K. Okay.